Hi everyone! So a few months ago Artessa sent me a bunch of their products so let's have a closer look at them like a little mini haul I suppose. Also I am not sponsored by Artessa but there will be links to all of these products down in the description box below. The links will be affiliate links so while you're getting yourself some affordable delicious art supplies you will also be supporting this channel at the same time. So anyway let's see what we have here. Um, actually Actually, I'm just gonna move it over here. So the first thing that we have is a metal tin case, pretty blank watercolor postcards. It is 100% cotton cold pressed paper, 140 pounds or 300 GSM. So yeah, let's open this and have a look. Also, this is their expert level of art supplies. I think they have three or four different levels, kids, premium and expert. There might be a beginner in there too, but I'm not entirely sure about that. I really like this packaging. Oh, look at that. So we got these little postcards and I really like the rounded edges. Very nice. And then we have this blank front side to paint on. I definitely think that these can make some super cute mini paintings. And the next thing is something similar. This is 25 blank watercolor cards. This is just regular cards and it looks like it comes with envelopes. So nice. And this is also 100% cotton cold pressed paper. Oh, and it looks like the packaging is like an envelope itself. Yeah, we have both cards and envelopes. Here we have the card itself. It is double or folded or whatever you call it. And here is the envelope, envelope, envelope. And it fits perfectly. So yeah, stay tuned for some cute Christmas cards. Then we have the next thing. So we have 36 watercolors that comes in half pans in a metal box and there is apparently a water brush pen included. And I have actually tried out the Artessa watercolor pans before but that was a much smaller case. This tiny little guy. I mean look how big this is. So it comes in this black tin case. We have this little hoop at the back to, I think it is to put your fingers through so that you can hold it like a palette. So white and new and shiny. Oh my, I will have to unwrap every single pan. And we have this little pamphlet to do the swatches in so that you can always keep it in the box. And we have some instructions on how to get a nice gradient swatch so that you can see how the colors look at its darkest and at its lightest. And let's not forget about the water paintbrush. It is one of these paintbrushes where you fill the barrel with water and then you just squeeze out the water to the bristle tip. But yeah, it looks like a very nice set with a lot of areas to mix the paints in. So this is what I'm gonna use to paint my cards with. Then we have this guy. It looks a little bland but it is apparently 10 sheets canvas pad and this one comes in a pack of two so it is 20 sheets. Oh, that is an interesting smell. It kind of have the same smell as sawdust. Oh, look at this. This looks a little more interesting than the backside. Oh, look at this. This is so exciting because it is real actual canvas, but in a pad. I've actually never seen anything like that before. I had totally forgot about these, so this was a very nice surprise. So this white side is the primed canvas, and this is the raw side. And yeah, very nice. And then we have this one. Ah, this is interesting. I kind of forgot about this one too. So this is a DIY frame mixed media pad, 20 sheets. So it is apparently a paper sheet that you can fold into a frame. Yeah, this is how it works. So you fold it up and then you get like a little uh, paper box, I guess. Yeah, this is very interesting. So let's open it up and have a look. Oh, look at this. 
yeah, this would be fun to try out. Let's just pull one out. So we have all of these guidelines how to fold it. On the cover here, it looks like the paper is this very nice and textured, kind of like watercolor paper, but it is actually super smooth. I kind of had an idea that I could use the watercolors on this paper, but it does say that it is ideal for wet and dry media, so maybe watercolors can work on it anyway. But let's Let's try to fold one just to see what it looks like. I will have to remove the corners without destroying everything. And then I'm gonna fold this one up. This last bit is definitely the trickiest, but yeah, something like that. This is what it looks like, and here we have the back side. And I think this is where you can poke like a little hole and then hang it on your wall on a nail or something. It looks like one of these painting canvases, but it is in paper, so I'm really looking forward to make something with these. And I do also have one of these in black paper, so let's have a look. Here we have this one. And it is the exact same thing as the white one, but it is in black paper. So I think it could be really nice to use like color pencils or gouache or something that pops on this black background. Yeah, these are the things that I've got to work with today. I don't think I'm gonna use the canvas pad unfortunately because I want to focus on watercolors and I don't think watercolors do that well on, on this type of base. So, but I might try it out in another video if that is something that you would like to see. So just let me know. But I'm definitely gonna do some cute little paintings. Again, there will be links in the description box below to all of these products. But yeah, let's start to paint something. So first I needed to swatch the watercolors and to do that I needed to unwrap every single little pan like their delicious little paint candies. Please don't eat paint. But that took me a good 15 minutes or so and then I was finally ready to do the swatching. I really like the little card that you can fill in yourself. It is much better than an already printed card because you can actually see what the colors looks like in real. But yeah, here they are, pigmented and smooth. They are actually very thick and creamy. I noticed a little like gouache almost, or like the Kuretake Gansai Tambi paints, so they feel much more opaque than other watercolors that I've tried. And then I also tested the watercolors on the scrap pieces from the DIY paper frame, just to see how the paper would react to the wet medium. And I tested the Artessa color pencils on it too, and I have a whole video testing these color pencils if you would be interested in that. But yeah, the paper, it warped a little from the watercolors, but other than that, it looks pretty good. So let's start with a cute little Christmas card using one of the postcards and the watercolors. Of course, I didn't unwrap all of those candies for nothing. But yeah, I guess I've been drawing a lot of cats lately. Surprise, surprise in scarves, so I was in a scarf kind of mode. And something that I've never drawn before, a Christmas tree in a scarf, a cozy tree I would call it, and a little face. I don't know if that is creepy or not, but it is what it is. But it is fluffy at least, and fluffy is always cute. It is a very lovely paper, I have to say. It is a pretty smooth grain, but it still has a nice texture. I don't know if I would dare posting this card as it is though. It feels like it is a little delicate, but I think putting it in an envelope would actually help. And at the end, I added a little bit of line art with a black brush pen just to tie it all together and some white highlights and a little bit of glitter and it's done. What do you say? Cute or creepy?
And next we have the folded card and I thought I would do something really simple with big shapes just to let the texture from the paint and the paper show through. So I'm painting a bit of a stylized poinsettia or Christmas star or Christmas flower I think it's also called just to show how simple it can be but still being pretty and I think this is a really cute holiday card. Then to give it a little more shimmer and shine, I used the Artessa Metallic gouache paint in the color gold and I add it to the middle of the flower, it just gives it that little extra something. Then next up I'm really excited to try out the DIY frame thingy and I decided to paint it flat first and then fold it. It seems a lot easier to paint the flat surface and as I mentioned before I've been drawing a lot of cats in scarves lately but it's been digital drawings only so I really felt the urge to do a traditional cozy cat in a scarf too and the paper it is very sturdy it can definitely handle the watercolors without tearing or breaking down or anything but I still didn't want to push the paper too much so I decided to skip all the extra layering and shading with the watercolors so I decided to go in with color pencils on top of the base watercolor layer instead just to add a little bit of extra texture as well. It is just fun to use the color pencils a bit too. I don't do a lot of color pencil art anymore and I kind of miss it sometimes. I might try to revisit more of my old favorite art supplies next year. Maybe I can turn it into a series revisiting old art styles and art techniques and art supplies that I haven't used in a while. I actually extended the background color a bit further out to the edges just to cover that outer edge of the frame once it's folded. So now it will look nice even from the side. And I really like the look of the watercolors and the color pencils. I used to do that a lot many many years ago but sometimes you find new art supplies that you like and then you kind of forget about the old ones. But yeah, I think this one turned out so cute and colorful. I'm really, really happy with it. The kitty got this very warm, almost like a golden glow to it. It just looks so cozy and cute. Then lastly I needed to try out the black paper frame as well and I did a little test on the corners that I will remove anyway and I tried the color pencils and I really thought that they would pop a bit more but then again it is very smooth paper so there isn't really a lot for the color pencils to grab onto. So then I tested the gouache which is opaque paint so they worked great on the black paper and you may remember that I said that the watercolors are very thick and creamy so I wanted to see how opaque they actually are and it is incredible how much they actually show up on the dark background. I'm using a lot of paint and very little water but yeah I am so impressed and surprised. I was kind of running out of time filming. I've been all over the place this week working on commissions and doing Christmas shopping online of course and Patreon stuff so but simple is also fun so I mixed a few of the watercolors with white gouache to make them more opaque and I could have just used regular gouache for this but I wanted very light pastel paint so I would have had to mix it with a white paint anyway. First I went in with a water colors alone and again I am amazed by how well they show us up but yeah doing a bit of a floral pattern it is one of my go-to mindless things to draw so that is what I went with. Then I went in with a gouache watercolor paint mixture to add some more details and highlights just to make things pop a bit more but yeah I really like how this one turned out. 
and I think it really adds a little extra when folding it together. It looks even more finished like a painting on actual canvas. It is a fun idea and it can make a really nice gift. You don't have to get a glass frame or anything, just fold the paper. So yeah, thanks Artessa for the art supplies and thank you guys for watching. Links to all of these products are down in the description box below. But yeah, here they are. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which one of these that you like the most. My favorites are definitely the cozy scarves art, the tree and the cat. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!